Greetings and salutations. In the summer of 1972, the death penalty was deemed cruel and unusual punishment by the U.S. Supreme Court in the Foreman v. Georgia decision. As a direct result, the death penalty was effectively banned all across the United States as unconstitutional. By 1973, however, the Texas legislature made modifications to the Texas Penal Code that reinstated the death penalty in Texas. Today, only 20 of the 50 states do not have death penalty statutes within the penal codes, demonstrating the exact controversial nature of the death penalty across the nation. In this video, we'll be looking at the brief overview of the death penalty in Texas, capital offenses, arguments for and against, and the cost of pursuing the death penalty. Let's begin. Texas has had a long history with the death penalty. Since 1819, executions have been carried out in the great state of Texas. Today, the male death row prison is located in Livingston, and the execution chamber is located in Huntsville. It is difficult to determine exactly how many have been executed throughout the state's history. However, according to the Death Penalty Information Center, 568 death row inmates have been executed since 1976. Texas has used three different methods of execution. Hanging from 1918 to 1923, electrocution from 1923 to 1964, and lethal injection from 1977 to present day. According to the Texas Penal Code, Title V, Section 19.03, there are 10 crimes that constitute capital murder in Texas, each involving the act of murder. We will look at three. The first in the penal code is the murder of a peace officer or a fireman who is acting in the lawful discharge of an official duty and who the person knows is a peace officer or a fireman. In short, murdering a police officer or a firefighter on duty. The third in the penal code is the murder for remuneration or promise of remuneration or employs another to commit murder for remuneration or promise of remuneration. <laughs> that is to say, an individual paying someone to murder another. The last in the penal code is the murder in retaliation for or on account of the service or status of another person as a judge or justice of the Supreme Court, the Court of Criminal Appeals, a Court of Appeals, a District Court, a Criminal District Court, a Constitutional County Court, a Statutory County Court, a Justice Court, or a Municipal Court. In other words, murdering a judge in retaliation for a decision in a case or simply because they are a judge. Should a society be allowed to put to death its criminals? This question not only is left for us to answer, but it centers on how we define justice and our own understanding of life, which invokes our personal, ideological, and even religious beliefs. Proponents of the death penalty claim that if an individual commits a heinous crime, 
the perpetrator forfeits their own life. An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, if you will. Opponents assert, however, that a society cannot risk executing innocent lives. Unfortunately, there are several cases of death row inmates that were found innocent after execution. How is that justice? Proponents also argue that prisons are becoming overpopulated, and as such, the death penalty for capital offenses assists with prison overpopulation. Opponents contend that physical costs of carrying out executions are simply too expensive. The tax dollars required to execute an individual should be reallocated. More on the cost in a moment. Proponents stress that death penalty brings justice for the victims. Could you accept a life sentence for a for the killer of a family member? Where is the justice if a if a killer is allowed to live? Opponents attest that the death penalty is applied unfairly to minorities and to those who cannot afford a skilled attorney. How can the death penalty be just if you cannot properly defend yourself? And finally, proponents uphold that the death penalty is a deterrent to crime. For example, if speeding down the highway was a capital offense, would you honestly speed? Opponents, however, defend that the death penalty is an ineffective deterrent to crime as capital offenses continue to occur. Case in point, in 2019, the Houston Police Department homicide officers investigated over 209 murders. As you consider the debates and your own views regarding the death penalty, it is easy to see the complexity and the moral questions this highly controversial issue brings to the forefront. The cost of executing death row inmates is substantial, as previously mentioned. According to a 2019 Dallas Morning News article, they estimate the death penalty cost $4.2 million per execution. While the chemical used for executions can be expensive and difficult to maintain a supply of, the cost of the death penalty is expressed as a total. There are a host of other factors involved, but we will discuss four here. First, a death penalty case requires finding a jury that is comfortable with pursuing capital punishment, which is becoming more difficult to do nowadays. Second, the legal fees associated with a death penalty case are significant. According to the 2010 Judicial Conference Report, defendant attorneys confronting the death penalty spent approximately 1,889 hours per trial between 1998 and 2004. Assuming attorneys charge $100 per hour, that's $188,900 just for legal fees alone. Third, death row inmates are not among the general population in prison. Death row inmates are housed in solitary confinement which costs more to build and maintain than a standard prison. And finally, since death penalty is an option in capital offense cases, both the prosecution and defense rely on expert testimony to bolster their case. As such, certification and expertise is becoming more expensive. An attorney needs to ensure that there is no one 
that has more or higher credentials than who they have to testify, because anyone with higher credentials can weaken the case. As such, both sides of the law spend a significant amount of money on experts for death penalty cases. Texas has a long history with the death penalty, and there are a host of arguments for and against the practice, ranging from morality to how much money it costs. As we consider the death penalty, we still face the question, should a society be allowed to put to death its criminals? This question itself is easy, but the answer is far more complex. It is up to us to answer the question through voicing our opinion regardless where we stand on the issue, through voting, public opinion, and other acts of political participation. This concludes the companion video.